Okay, here we are. Yep, so many of you out there have asked me to do a review, give my thoughts and opinions on the Indian Challenger. So I finally got my hands on one. I stole it a couple weeks ago so I could do this review. But I'm gonna give it back so it's kind of like just borrowed, right? It's not really stealing. So the first thing I thought is, hey, look, Indian copied the Harley Davidson Road Glide. Looks very similar. But hey, that's how it works, right? They are the underdog right now. They're chasing Harley, the big boys in the industry. But I will say that Indian gave it their own flair and style. And uh, that's what we're gonna go over today. And if you're wondering, nope, not a sponsored video. I don't work for either company, so you can be assured my thoughts and opinions are unbiased. Welcome back, bikeaholics. Ryan Erlacher here, lawabidingbiker.com. I always thank you, that's right, you, for checking back in. Okay, so the reason we have this bike, we did an aftermarket handlebar install on it and heated grips. Of course, we filmed it. It will eventually release. You'll be able to find it over at lawabidingbiker.com forward slash Indian handlebars. And don't forget, if you want to do bars on your Harley, we've got four different videos. Those can all be found over at lawabidingbiker.com forward slash Harley handlebars. And so that's one thing many of you are going to change is the handlebars if you get one of these because the stock handlebars not only look really weird in my opinion um, they're just not very comfortable for that many riders but with that said many have the same issues on a hardy road glide and quick shout out to squirt who loaned us the bike and uh, he actually bought it before we rode back from sturgis 2020 uh, he took a harley non-touring there and uh, he was looking at harleys and indians he ended up picking the challenger and uh, if you want to see more about that make sure you check out our awesome Sturgis 2020 documentary film. You can get all my documentary films over at lawabidingbiker.com forward slash ride dash now. I'll link to it in the description below. Okay, so in this video, we are going to be comparing the Indian Challenger versus the Harley Road Glide. These are the bikes with the similar shark nose fairings, of course, frame mounted, so the fairing doesn't turn with the bars, they turn independently. We're not gonna get in the weeds too much with the bat wing fairings, which are actually fork mounted, they turn with the handlebars something like the Indian Chieftain. The reason is, is they're still running uh, the uh, 111 Thunderstroke. They're not running this new 108 water-cooled motor. So we're gonna get a stick to those two bikes. Okay, so I ride at my Leo day job on a 2018, of course, Harley Electroglide Police Edition. It has got the uh, Milwaukee 8 107, so I can loosely compare it to the Challenger 108. I'm also a police motorcycle instructor. Additionally, I ride a ton of miles off duty for the, those of you that follow the channel here on my main bike, my 14 Street Glide Special with the 103 high output. So hopefully all this qualifies me to uh, review this Indian Challenger. All right, God has given me a gorgeous day. What do you say we hop on this bad boy, get it out on the street, test it, and of course, while we're out there, we'll be stopping, breaking it down, letting you know what you need to know. Okay, you can time it. Here we go, zero to 60 test. We're gonna get on this bad boy. 60 right there, guys, and that was uh, third top end of third gear. I'm in fourth now, fifth, and we'll finish off. Sixth there. She's spunky. The motor feels completely different to me than a Hardy motor for sure. So let's talk motors really briefly here uh, between the Road Glide and the Challenger here. So if you're looking at a Harley Road Glide, of course the base model coming in with the Milwaukee 8, 107 cubic inch air-cooled. 
and uh, I think, don't quote me on any of these, but somewhere around 85, 90 horsepower and 111 uh, foot-pounds of torque. Uh, of course, if you move up to the Road Glide, Harley Road Glide Special, you're going to get the Milwaukee 8 114. I think they're saying 100 horsepower and 118 foot-pounds of torque. And then we move right here to the Challenger, and uh, it has got the 108. I forget what they're calling it, but it's a 108. Uh, it is water-cooled overhead cam, and uh, yeah, coming in, they say, at 122 horsepower and uh, I believe 128 foot-pounds of torque. Okay, and earlier I mentioned it just feels different, the motor. Uh, so let me try to explain that. It just seems, uh, there's a lot more feedback, a lot more vibration in the bars now. We did switch bars on this, so take that into account. Um, definitely more feedback and vibration. Not a deal breaker, I'm just letting you know. And I just feel like the engine is definitely like revier, busier. Uh, might be the word for it. It seems like uh, it's got lots of power, but it's working harder. Um, I hope that makes sense. But I will tell you, when you get in that power band, even in fourth gear, we'll bump down to third, we'll get up there. You literally feel the front wheel almost come off the ground. That's just a throttle. Of course, then if you clutch it, you can get it off the ground just a little bit. Of course, just a little clutch wheelie. And uh, that part definitely is, uh, you feel a lot more power than on the uh, Harley. As far as handling, suggested speed 30 there. So we'll just go into this at an easy, you know, 20 over at 50. And it feels really nice on these corners. Again, that was 20 over on that suggested speed there on that corner. And that was nothing. I could go way faster than that. It seems like, uh, I will say, you have to, there's less input that you have to give to this bike to get it to that state. Now, you gotta lean a little bit more, work just a little bit more on the Harley, but I think that's personal preference. It's not like it's hard to do on the Harley. Um, that could actually be better sometimes, you know, to have to exaggerate movements a little bit rather than just have it really touchy depending on of course what kind of ride you're doing but again super stable we could just dive right into that corner like you saw there that's just uh pulling here got a few things to talk about Okay, so I'm sitting on the base model Indian Challenger, coming in at $23,000. It's pretty much identical to its bigger brothers, the Limited, the Dark Horse, which is the black version of the Limited. Those bikes are gonna cost you $5,000 more, but they do come with some extra things. Now for that $5,000, you'll get baked in GPS navigation, you'll get remotely locking saddlebags, you'll get TPMS tire pressure management system, and you'll get Indian's Smart Lean technology. So what is Smart Lean technology? Well, basically it's Indian's version of Harley's RDRS, which is Reflex Defensive Rider System. Now, both these systems basically adjust traction control and ABS based on lean angle to make the ride safer. Now, that's a very watered down version of what those systems are. If you wanna learn more, I did do a complete detailed video on Harley's RDRS. I'll pop a card and link in the description below. Check the video out. So some other things you should know if you're trying to choose between an Indian Challenger or a Harley Road Glide is that on the base model Indian Challenger, you cannot get the Smart Lean technology as an option. You're gonna to have to bump up to that Limited or Dark Horse to get it. In contrast, on the Harley Road Glide, you can have the RDRS system as an option, both on their base model Road Glide and the Road Glide Special for a $1,000 add-on. And it's also worth noting that all the Challenger models come stock with three ride modes, which is standard, rain, and sport mode. Uh, in contrast, the Harleys do not come with those. Okay, so the Harley Road Glide base model, it's coming in at 21,700 in contrast to the base model Challenger at $23,000. So the Harley Road Glide, $1,300 less. And you can add that RDRS system for a thousand. So even with that, you're still $300 less than the Indian. 
So let's say you want to bump up to the limited, the Dark Horse, or the Harley Road Glide Special, which you'll get an engine bump with the Harley to a 114 Milwaukee 8 air-cooled. This stays if you go to the limit, limited to the 108. And that Road Glide Special coming in at a base price of 26 1,700. Uh, you add the RDRS uh, for 1,000, you're at 27,700, which is $300 less than the base price limited uh, Challenger coming in at uh, $28,000. Now it's worth noting that the regular base model Harley Road Glide comes with a non touchscreen smaller 4.3 inch version of the Harley Boombox infotainment system. If you bump up to the Harley Road Glide Special, of course, it's coming with the new uh, large touchscreen GTS infotainment system. Now, when it comes to the Challenger, both models, the regular and limited, both come in with a larger uh, seven inch ride command infotainment system. So one of the things you really need to know is Indian is trying to stick it to you a little bit and let me explain. So the Harley Davidson uh, boombox system, it comes with built in navigation GPS. You don't have to pay a service to get that. It just comes with the bike. What Indian's doing, what I found out is obviously on this model, the base model, you don't get the baked in navigation. Uh, if you go to the limited or dark horse it does come with gps navigation for two years but uh, then you got to pay for it so on this bike when you hit the navigation button it gives you a, basically a warning screen telling you to contact the dealership so they want to stick you with monthly fees for life to use gps that i definitely do not like about this bike all right so let's finish with the infotainment systems and then we'll be done with that i know it's important to a lot of you so let's talk about the ride command system. Some people say, oh, it's so much better than the boom box and it's perfect. Well, it's not. Let me tell you my short time with it. I've already found a few bugs and glitches um, that happens with computers. Uh, one of them being I tried to volume all the way down to mute and it won't unless you bump up a few notches and then bump down, you can mute it. Um, of course, the boom box has plenty of glitches itself too on the Harley Davidson. I will say out of the box, this is a much simpler UI. I think it's uh, easier to learn for a rider, um, but it's got soft buttons and an integrated touchscreen where the Boombox system GTS is all touchscreen. Um, I will say that on this, it is limited on what you can do on the toggles. Sometimes, like when it was trying to find a gas station for me, I literally had to reach up and touch the screen. Um, so with those toggles on the bar here, or this toggle, it is limited what you can do. You're just gonna have to use the touch screen. In contrast, you've got options on the Harley Boombox GTS system. You can use it all touch screen, but everything in that system you can manipulate and there's a toggle on each side and you can completely operate that without taking your hands off the handlebars. I really give kudos to Harley for that one. And finally, and I'll stop, I promise, I just don't want you to go to an Indian dealership and have them tell you that this is a perfect system and that it's so much better than the Harley Boombox GTS. I can tell you, not true. Um, they're both good systems, but they both have bugs and things you just need to learn. And real quick, I will say with the Boombox system, there is a learning curve. Of course, we will help you flatten that learning curve. It is a very capable system and does a lot of things. Uh, I'll put a link in the description below, but if you head over to lawabidingbiker.com forward slash Harley Boombox, we have a three video series over there. We will get you up and running on that system so you can spend less time learning it and more time riding nothing but rave reviews on those videos we've been putting out for many years now. All right, so I'm gonna take this bike, do some bar lock turns, more lower speed like we do on police bikes, coursework, kind of see how it handles. I will say I'm gonna take it a little bit easy because I haven't practiced on this bike a lot. All right, now I've got to choke up on this bike a bit because it's got the taller bars. And we're gonna go for a left turn and I'm just feeling the, there's a full bar lock. Full bar lock all the way around to the left here. It feels pretty good. Just gotta find this uh, clutch and throttle here. Good. Feels good, you can do some course work on this. Now, we'll uh, feel the right here. And we'll get it into a bar lock. Throttle's a little touchy there. So there's a full bar lock. But it's good. Feels nice. 
full bar lock right full bar lock left here get back into it good there we go nice transition back into right oh yeah So definitely capable. I know you're listening, Indian. Send me one. We'll take it through some real courses. One thing I will say that I don't like at all, Indian should have absolutely put crash bars on this bike. Uh, engine guards, they do on the limited, the dark horse, but they absolutely should come stock for that price. Your foot slips once on some gravel at an intersection, you dump this thing, you're gonna cause a ton of damage. So the Indians, uh, crash bars, $400. If you want to put crash bars on it, I would strongly suggest it, especially if you're gonna be doing cone work and course work. It'll save you from some serious uh, body damage. All right, and of course the old biker gripper, sexiest, sleekest, strongest cell phone motorcycle mount on the market, guys. I put it on this bike for squirt. Um, this is a universal mount, can go anywhere on the bars. Chrome black, nothing but five star reviews, been selling them forever in the Law Abiding Biker store. I'll link to it in the description below for you guys. All right, so I wanna talk about power. I talked about it a lot. This definitely has more power, but let's face it guys, let's put this in the right category. This is a touring bike. So although power is cool, of course we all like more power better, right? Not always completely true. We want reliability. These bikes, the Challenger, the Rogue Glide, these are made for cross country touring, okay? Both bikes, even though this one has more power, they both have plenty. Of course, there is a line there. You want plenty of power to passengers and gear, and you wanna have that power band for passing, you know, but as long as you have all those things and both bikes have those things, you're gonna be fine on either of these modern bikes as far as that goes if you want tons of power and speed then what the hell are you doing on a touring bike you should be on a sport bike move out of this category okay. all right so both of these bikes uh coming in at about you know over 800 850 for the harley i think this one is 20 pounds less both uh standard cruise control of course it's a touring bike we've got abs and there i will say that uh, both saddlebags are sufficient for what they are as far as storage space and as always i really want to hear your comments so leave them below on anything i've mentioned or am going to mention or your personal experience with the indian i really look forward to hearing from you this is a community oh and one more thing before you leave the channel make sure you hit that subscribe button and bell icon every time those are hit another biker joins a revolution and we would love to have you be part of it so this is a super bumpy little section of road here and uh, I will definitely say I've ridden this one on my Harley and it's definitely less harsh hitting all those divots there and cracks. So definitely give a bit of better suspension to the old Indian Challenger here. All right, so I've tested the brakes quite a bit. Honestly, I think they're very close to the ones on my police bike. Some people say they're a little better. I don't know about that. Um, let's just do an emergency brake here, front and rear threshold. And I'll tell you that, boy, that ABS kicks in so quick on this thing, crazy. That's something to get used to, that it kicks in that quick. But, I mean, they feel really good. That front brake, man, I can really mash it. Let's come to... So it, uh, it stops quick, but like I say, similar to my police Harley. So what we're gonna do right now is test traction control and uh, see how it works. Some of you like to run that. There are certain circumstances for it. So right now, it's on. I'm disabling it. And I noticed that every time you restart the bike, it re-engages it. So you can't just leave it off. Every time you start the bike back up, you gotta get in there. So that's kind of a pain. So it's off right now. We're in first gear. Let's just see what happens.
Okay, so just all out, peeling out, lots of power. So let's go ahead and engage traction control on the ride command system there. All right, so what you're gonna see is probably, um, it's gonna spin, but then it's gonna back off and get traction. Now, I'm not gonna do anything with the throttle, but keep it on. So if it backs off, that's the traction control doing it. Yeah, see, I almost had it three quarter throttle there and it wouldn't give it any more. It just completely backed off. So it's a little delayed traction control. If they're gonna put it, I would like to see it um, grab a little bit quicker. So just something to be aware of. All right, let's talk about some of the cons about this bike. So let me show you one of the first cons and something that I noticed right away on the Indian. And it's gonna have to do with throttle response. This is an electronic throttle, the Harley is too, but there just seems to be quite a lag. I noticed it right away on the Indian. So let's do a few tests here and you'll see. It's not as snappy as you would hope. I'm basically flooring that. Once you get a little bit on it, then she snaps good. Now, of course, the Harley will do that a little bit, but not, you see that? It's just, of course, there isn't a EFI tuner on this. There's no, it's stock pipes, everything's stock intake, but I'm not very happy with that. All right, so certainly not a con, but something else worth talking about. That is, the Indian comes with an electronic adjustable windshield on the fly, right handlebar toggle up, down, when you get it all the way up, there's a little cutout, give you some extra air or reduce head buffeting. Um, Hardy doesn't have this. A lot of people think that is the coolest thing. I honestly think it's a little bit gimmicky. I really wouldn't use it. I've had a bike in the past, a Honda police bike a long time ago, had electronic windshield, never used it. Um, the problem is uh, you get the windshield that's the right height for you and then just open your shield. That's why I wear a modular helmet if you want to get a little extra air. I don't know that I'd be bumping it all the time. Maybe you would. Some of you, again, personal preference, maybe you really like that, but you're also gonna be limited on aftermarket windshield opportunities because of that kind of setup. So just something to be aware of. And another thing, maybe a little bit nitpicky and a lot of other manufacturers do it too. It's something I really appreciate on the Harleys and that is there's a right signal switch on the right handlebar and a left one on the left handlebar. The Indian, like other bikes, are coming out just with this one on the left side. Um, that can come down to personal preference, but I do appreciate Harley has one for each side. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about looks. Now this is personal preference. I'm just telling you my opinion. Comment below, I'm curious what you think. That's one of the things that draws me away from this bike. Again, that's a personal thing. One of the things I really don't like is this plastic that Indian uses to cover everything. It's just like a hard plastic. That's why a lot of us like Harleys is they show the mechanical components. It's very beautiful to look at mechanical in nature. This is more like a sports bike. They start hiding everything. Um, they've hidden it back there. Another thing is, is the air cleaner setup. That's just a fake cover um, because the air box is actually underneath the tank. You gotta take the tank off. It rams air up through there. So this is just to cover some stuff. So you're gonna be really limited on uh, aftermarket, you know, uh, uh, intakes and things like that. So um, the other side has one too, a fake cover, and it just uh, covers the radiator lines, the big, big lines um, and that's because another thing that I don't like um, but for water cooled you kind of have to is that big big radiator just huge on the front of this bike that's something that you have to get over um, definitely personal preference and looks on that and just real quick we'll get right back into the video a lot of man hours and expenses go into keeping this channel going strong just trying to help as many bikers as we can worldwide you can support us by becoming a patron member i'll put a link in the description below by becoming a member there are benefits such as t-shirts and stickers you get into the private facebook group it is a troll free zone bikers helping bikers in there you get access to our podcast early live video broadcast with live chat up to access to our premium videos up on request and best of all you get access to those ride meetup and events thanks for considering becoming a member let's get back into your video so the question really is after testing this bad boy have i changed my mind uh, on my next bike to go indian over harley the answer is no but 
let me explain. You see, if money wasn't an obstacle, I would absolutely have this bike and a whole bunch of other bikes uh, in my garage. I just love to ride. I support whatever kind of motorcycle you ride, as long as your knees are in the breeze, right? Really, this comes down to uh, 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 the way it looks, number one. Um, and, and I still like the look of it. It's just the Harley's better for me. I like the looks of them a little bit better. One of the big deal breakers on the Indian right now for me is the lack of aftermarket part support. That's one of the things about having a Harley and uh, you know being involved in the sport and the lifestyle is you can do anything to your Harley Davidson uh, engine components, uh, you know other components. I mean the aftermarket uh, parts is just a huge industry. You can really tinker on them, build on them. This is going to be very, very limited. In addition to that, riding cross country, thousands of miles, there are way more Harley dealerships and support out there than there are with Indians. But make no mistake about it, that is a badass bike. Um, I told you some little cons, not a big deal. I would absolutely own one of these. If I had the money, I'd have one of those and a Harley. And I can tell you with certainty that whether you decide to purchase the Indian Challenger or the Harley Road Glide, you are going to be totally satisfied. They are neck and neck, both great bikes for cross country touring. Oh, and your journey's not done on the channel. I'm gonna pop a couple of videos, hopefully something useful or entertaining. Heck, maybe both. Anyways, when you're done watching videos, make sure you get out there and ride every chance you get, bikeaholics.